Welcome back, everyone, to another Space News Rundown with me. And my, do we have a busy one this week. Lots of stuff going on down at Boca Chica Starbase to discuss. As SpaceX really ramps up the pace with Starship, we have big news regarding SLS, several other successful launches, and a super busy launch calendar to prepare for for the next seven days. So let's get right into it, beginning, as always, with all the latest Starship news. Well guys, our patience is finally starting to pay off. Over the past few weeks of Space News videos, it has been kind of a stretch filling these videos out with content because not a great deal of changes have been happening with each 7 day cycle, but this past week has been a brilliant change of pace. Static fires are back after a roughly 3 month hiatus following Booster 3's test campaign. Last week we saw 3 major tests with Starship Ship 20. Or are we back to the SN naming convention now? Elon Musk tweeted a picture of Ship 20, but with the caption Starship SN20. Although it is worth noting that this tweet was quickly deleted and the photo wasn't reposted with a different caption. Of course, this did make me a little bit curious as to whether or not the image itself was taken by Elon without realising that some secret or otherwise confidential piece of hardware was visible. So I did do a little bit of digging and as it turns out, it was just a picture from C. Nunez images. So there's no deep conspiracy to be seen here and we can all move along to the actual topic I was about to discuss before diving into this massive tangent, the test campaign for Ship 20. Ship 20 had two engines attached, a sea level Raptor engine, which should be a familiar sight to you all by now, as it's the same kind of engine that's been used on all other Starship prototypes so far, but the other engine on Ship 20 was a vacuum Raptor engine, which, as the name would suggest, is a variant of Raptor designed to work better in the vacuum of space. While the two engines are functionally basically the same, the key difference is the massive engine bell for the vacuum engine. Anyway, we've seen tests of this engine on test stands before, but never actually attached to a Starship vehicle. Until now, that is. On the 19th of October, Ship 20 performed a Raptor engine pre-burner test with both the sea level and vacuum Raptor engines. This looks a little bit like a mini static fire, but of course the exhaust gases in the main combustion chamber aren't ignited. The test was apparently a success, and then on Thursday the 22nd of October, we got a proper static fire from the vacuum Raptor engine, which marked the very first time a vacuum Raptor engine has been fired while integrated onto a Starship. Later on that same night, Ship 20 conducted another static fire test, this time using both engines. Unfortunately, while the engine testing was a success, the ever troublesome thermal protection tiles were affected by the vibrations, with a few of the tiles completely falling off. Elon did reassure us that SpaceX expected some of the tiles to shake loose during the static fire, and I am optimistic that they should hopefully remain attached during an actual flight. Looking back to the historic flight of SN15, if I recall correctly, the ship didn't lose any of its tiles during flight, and it was only the landing impact itself that caused some of the tiles to come loose and fall off. And so it's not a huge issue if this happens after re entry, as the tiles are only needed for re entry, or at least a non issue during this early stage of development. I'm also hoping hopeful that catching the starships using the Mechazilla arms will help absorb some of the landing impact shock, since SpaceX can time it so that the arms move downward during the catch to make the impact as gentle as possible. I guess time will tell regarding all of this. Turning our attention to Stage 0 now, which is the infrastructure that will be used to support a launch and landing of Starship, we have some pretty major updates there too. Cryoshell 8 was rolled down to the tank farm last week and placed over GSE Tank 8, and then not long after this, the final Cryoshell tank was rolled out and placed over GSE Tank 2, meaning that the tank farm is now complete, a huge milestone for SpaceX. We also saw some big updates to the launch tower, all the skates that will move the catch arm carriage up and down the tower were in installed and we also caught glimpses of the cable drag chain installed as well, which we saw being delivered to the site not too long ago. And finally, and most notably, the chopstick catching arms and the carriage were attached to the tower. It stayed there under crane support for a little while, but we've since seen it be detached from all cranes and is now attached to the tower entirely unaided. Of course, a lot more work still needs to be done to make the arms functional, but this is a massive step towards that goal. Elsewhere, we can see from Brendan Lewis's latest production diagram that future boosters and starships are coming along very well, and we've seen the first vertical beam installed for the new bigger high bay, which I'd expect to see springing up very quickly over the next few weeks. 
There's still not really been an update on when the first orbital launch attempt for Starship will be, unfortunately. The comment period for the FAA's draft environmental assessment will close at the end of the month, and from there SpaceX will need to work with the FAA to make any amendments to the Starship program if any necessary changes are ordered, and of course they'll still then need to apply for a launch license to launch Ship 20 and Booster 4. It's not clear how long the amendment period will last, and to be honest, I'm still not all that confident that we'll see a launch before the end of the year. We did get an Elon tweet saying that if all goes well, Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch attempt next month, but lest we forget that this is basically a cut and paste tweet from back in August. So unfortunately, this tweet only really tells us how soon the rocket can launch without considering license approval, and the reality is that it'll probably take quite some time. I would, however, love to be proven wrong on this. Do you think it'll launch this year? Let me know in the comments down below. I always like hearing other people's thoughts. But that is everything that I wanted to discuss regarding Starship updates this week, so let's take a look at what else we saw in the world of spaceflight. Last week we saw three launches in total, the first was on the 21st of October and was the maiden flight of Nuri, South Korea's first indigenously developed orbital launch vehicle. The launch proceeded very well at first, but then, unfortunately, the third stage shut down 46 seconds prematurely, resulting in the vehicle falling short of orbital velocity. Luckily there wasn't a payload on board, aside from a mass simulator, so there are no angry customers to be worried about, but it's still a shame that the rocket didn't make it. That being said, this was still an amazing first launch attempt. Many maiden rocket flights end in failure. Ariane 5 and Electron, for example, both failed on their first flight attempts. Despite the unfortunate premature end, I still think a big congratulations to South Korea is in order for this first attempt, and here's hoping for better luck in the future. The next launch we saw was on the 24th of October, and this was a Long March 3BE, which launched a single technology demonstration satellite to geosynchronous Earth orbit. According to official sources, the satellite, named Shijan-21, will mainly be used to test and verify space debris mitigation technologies. The third and final launch of the week also took place on the 24th, and was an Ariane 5 launched from the French Guiana spaceport. On board were two satellites, one a communication satellite for Luxembourg, and one a military communication satellite for France. Both satellites were successfully placed into geosynchronous Earth orbit and are operational. Ariane 5 is of course the rocket that's going to be launching the James Webb Space Telescope later this year, so it's always good to see that it's maintaining its good reliability record. Now beyond launch news, last week also played host to a momentous occasion. Artemis 1 is now fully stacked. Look at this beautiful shot of it in the Vehicle Assembly Building. This is NASA's massive space launch system, or just SLS, rocket with an Orion spacecraft at the top. Hopefully this is a good indication that we'll be seeing the rocket's maiden flight arrive on time in the first quarter of 2022. Side note, I do love the completely different approaches to stacking that SpaceX and NASA take. NASA with this big, huge, bespoke building full of moving and custom-shaped platforms, and then there's SpaceX, who just used a crane. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to see which rocket launches first, SLS or Starship. My money is on Starship right now, but do you disagree? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And hey, while you're down there, you know i got to ask you to like the video if you are enjoying what you're seeing so far. It really helps me survive the algorithm, and I always do appreciate it. Anyway. Those were all the launch events that I wanted to talk about from last week, which means that we can now move along to the final segment of the video, all the launches to look forward to over the next seven days. The first launch of the week will be on the 25th of October. This will be a Chinese Kwaizu 1A, which will carry a single Jilin Geofen Earth observation satellite to low Earth orbit. Next up, we'll see a Japanese H2A202 launch from the Tanegashima Launch Complex. On board will be a QZS1R satellite, which will be used for navigation. It's going to be placed into a Tundra orbit, which is a kind of highly elliptical geosynchronous orbit. Next up will be a Soyuz 2.1A launching on the 28th of October, which will carry the Spacecraft Progress MS-18 to the International Space Station. This will be the 170th flight of a Progress spacecraft, and the vehicle is expected to dock to the aft port of the Zvezda module and remain attached for 215 days, supporting the Expedition 66 mission aboard the station. On the same day as Soyuz, we'll see Astra make a fourth attempt at getting Rocket 3 into space. We were all pretty hopeful that the last launch 
launch attempt we saw would be Astra's third times the charm moment, but unfortunately an engine issue meant that it actually went a bit more sideways than vertical upon liftoff, and as such it never made it all the way to space. Here's hoping that Astra finally nail things this time and achieve orbit. The final launch of the week will be on the 31st of October and will be a Falcon 9 carrying the third operational Crew Dragon mission. The rocket will blast off from the Kennedy Space Center and will carry Commander Raja Chari, pilot Thomas Marshburn and mission specialists Kayla Barron and Matthias Mora to the International Space Station. For most of the astronauts on board, this will be their first space flight, apart from Marshburn who will be on his third. Their mission will last until late April 2022, after which they will splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. Best of luck to all the team, but that is the final expected launch of the week, which means that that's the end of the video. Guys, if you made it this far, Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you want to check out my social medias and stuff, there's now like an info card on screen, as well as some names scrolling on the left. You guys know exactly who they are. They're my patrons, and if you want to join their magnificent ranks, you can do so by clicking the link in the description or via the card on screen. And you can also join the lounge squad by clicking the join button below the video. There's two video suggestions on screen if you want to check one of those out. One of them should be a Kerbal Space Program video from me, which I haven't done in a little while, so hopefully You'll enjoy that if you haven't watched it already. But that's it from me, guys. Thank you once again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.